can turn in your King James Bible to Luke chapter 12, verse 2. Luke chapter 12, verse 2. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. We go back to the Old Testament, to the book of Exodus. The book of Exodus, chapter 34. Exodus 34, verse 6 and 7. It says here, And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Um, unconfessed sin has always been very serious in God's sight. And... Um, this is a very hard video for me to make, uh, very hard. Um, I've gone through some really rough times in the last couple months, and this is one of the worst things that I've had to go through. Uh, some things I need to say um, about the big betrayal. What is the big betrayal here? Well, why am I doing this? Well, um, because there's sin uh, within my family and within... Uh, my ancestry, if you want to call it that, very near ancestry. And I want to clear my family name. I've um, been in contact with my older sister, and uh, she's been doing a lot of genealogy-type research on our family. And um, she did sent me this thing here. It's 14 generations back of the Denlinger family, going the whole way back into the 1600s. Um, we are... Uh, we've had, we have a long history in Germany and Switzerland and, and then coming to America, helping to found this country, one of the older families that was here um, in the early 1700s. Um, I'm, I'm very thankful to have my name, Denlinger. But uh, unfortunately, recently, I found out that uh, there's been a great sin in my family and um and it's a sin that I feel needs to be confessed because it was covered up for a very long time. And um, I was lied to. I was deceived. And it hurts very, very deeply. Um, but I'm a Christian. And I'm a preacher. I'm in ministry. And I'm not going to continue in the cover-up of this great sin. Um, and it was covered up by church people. And I want no part of church cover-ups. That's why I hate church buildings. The older I get, the more I hate them because they cover up so much. There's so many things that are just wrong and, and evil, and they cover it up. And I'm not going to be part of that. You say, what is this? What is this big betrayal all about? Um, well, my father covered up a sin for 62 years. Never told anybody. Um, and I believe my grandparents, unfortunately, were involved in it as well. And um, he covered it up for 62 years, but God revealed it uh, before he passed away in December of 2021. So he's not been dead for very long, but uh, found out something. And this is the big betrayal. Found out that I have a half-brother. Um, my father had a uh, child out of wedlock as a young Mennonite man. Um, my father was getting into some, just to go back in his late teens, he was getting into playing uh, fast pitch softball and uh, kind of, you know, being the cool guy at a, a muscle car that it, he and, and another guy had built and he'd go drag racing and whatever else. And, and I knew he was dating a girl in, uh, he was my dad was from Soudersburg, PA, Lancaster County, and then he was dating a girl named Judy. That's he told me the story about this, and she was from Reading, Pennsylvania, up in Berks County, and um, and he said that she was you know really something else. She was very controlling and whatever else, and and uh, she had a cigarette problem that she would smoke and things, and so it just didn't work out. And 
and um, and he told me that uh, that they broke up. He broke up with her. He dumped her, I guess, or something. His story was, and uh, he said that she was so bitter about it that she was calling my grandmother, my dad's mother, and saying that she was pregnant. Um, and how that's how she, bitter she was, and she oh she was something else, and then and then after that, my dad left the Mennonite Church, went to Calvary Monument Bible Church, met my mother, they got married, and had my oldest brother, and that was that. That was the story. Uh, well, it turns out that uh, she wasn't lying. Uh, she did have a child, a boy, and um, I have a 62 year, 62 year old older brother that I never met. And um, he had been adopted by a Mennonite family and always just kind of thought, well, they're my parents, they're my family, and they never told him either. And uh, come to find out that him and his sister, I guess she was looking through some of the records, I don't know the exact story yet, but uh, his sister found out that they were both adopted. They had a, a number of children, but the one sister and then him they found out that uh, that they had been adopted, and he saw that his name, his mother's name, was Judy, and um, and she's dead now too. Judy Bruce was her name, but there was no father on the birth certificate. And he thought, well, this is kind of odd, and and um, you know, it was a cover up. You see. Well, uh, he started doing some research, and I guess, and whatever else, and started one thing led to another and he found out some of my cousins and, and things and he said that he took a DNA test I guess and, and it came back that um, I guess uh, he was somehow related to a Denlinger family and uh, through his DNA and so he started checking into it did any Denlingers ever date a girl named Judy and one of my cousins said yeah I'm pretty sure that my uncle Mel um, he dated a girl named Judy okay so asked but my sister was there she asked my father did you ever date a girl named Judy and he said no I, I never did lied he was he was starting to go a little bit senile towards the end of his life there but he said no I never met and my mother was sitting there she said yes you did it's a girl you dated right before you married me I don't know I don't remember or whatever else and so that was in 2019 so Long story short, my sister did a DNA test, found out, yeah, this guy's actually a half-brother, and thinking, okay, what's going on here? But my dad just, no, no, there's nothing to it. There's no truth to that and whatever. Um, did some other checking around, and, and yeah, the whole thing was true. And he actually went in and saw my dad in the hospital, um, his illegitimate son. 62 years, my dad covered that up. That up. And... Uh, you know, it ticks me off because when I was raised, I had a very, um, I had a very strong attitude against fornication, and um, there were multiple girls in the high school that um, tried uh, to get me, you know, to date them, and I knew that their reputation was one that they would have been, they would what we called easy, if you know what I mean. Um, they liked to fornicate, in other words, with, with uh, different guys and whatever, and very pretty girls, and um, and I just was always no way, no, because I knew that if I made one of those girls to be with child, the proper biblical term for pregnant, the secular way of saying it, if I knew if I made one of those girls to be with child, that I was going to be forced to marry her, because that's how I was raised, that's what I was taught, and so I was very, there were certain sins I fell for, other ones it was no way, and my dad raised me very much against alcohol, drinking for any reason, and very much against, you know, fornication, called premarital sex and by the secular world. And I knew that. And now to find out that, no, actually my dad was covering it up the whole time, that he had a child outside of wedlock, and he just lied as well about leaving the Mennonite church at the same time. And within basically a year, he has a son to a girl that he's dating, gets married, and then has a son to my mother, the first of our ch the children of our family, within a year, approximately, right in that range there. And this is a man I looked up to. This is a man that, that uh, 
you know, was my best friend for many years. My dad was. And I took the, the funeral and, or the his death and everything. It was hard. It was very hard thinking about my dad passing away. And, uh, you know, always I'd have questions for him. And I'd call him on the phone and talk to him and things. And, and you know, after he died, I'd, I'd have questions come into my mind and say, oh, I have to, oh, yeah, my dad's dead. But I I honored his legacy and I respected his legacy. And now I found out, oh, actually, um, no, he actually lied. He deceived me my whole life. I don't understand. I mean, I, I do understand, but it's just... Um, so I've been dealing with that. Uh, it's not been fun. It's not been fun. And... Um, but my relationship to Jesus Christ is far more important than any relationship to my family. And, you know, and I have to just say it. My grandparents had to have been involved. Um, my grandparents had money. And um, and they, I don't know the exact thing of what happened or whatever else, but I'm, I'm thinking that there was probably some kind of a deal in the Mennonite church. And they said to my dad, we're kicking you out because of what you did. Because, you know, 1960 is when this thing happened. 1960 is when this boy was born, this son was born, and there was no abortion available for another 14 years. So, you know, back then a girl got pregnant before marriage and it was a big, very taboo thing, as it should be. It was covered up by the Mennonite church. My dad went off to a independent Bible church and, and it was, oh, okay, you can get date this girl and get married and then have a child right away to just kind of, oh, nothing to see here, nothing happened here, you know. Everybody makes mistakes. I get that. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. I understand. I've done plenty of stupid things in my life as well. I'm a sinner. I still sin. I don't teach sinless perfection to all the liars out there that say I do. I don't. Um, but to cover it up. To cover it up. Lie to your own children. I mean, his, his parents said, hey, don't ever talk to anybody about this. Okay, they're dead. They're gone. They died in the 1990s. My grandfather in 91, I think my grandmother in 1998 or something like that. They're dead. They're gone. Tell the truth. There's a boy out there somewhere that's part you. Your son. You have a son someplace. Tell the truth. But he didn't. I am not going to carry that. I'm not going to say, well, I, let's just not talk about that. My dad died a saint. He was a professing Christian, and um, he was a great man and everything else. My dad was a liar. He was a deceiver, and I will not carry that legacy with me, and I don't want any kind of um, iniquity, any kind of generational thing being put upon myself and upon my little boy. Um, we told him about it. He knows about it, and he just, why would, why would he do that? I don't understand. Why would he do that? It shook him up bad. My grandfather would do that? He'd lie? Well, he was never going to tell anybody, was he, Dad? And I said, no, he wasn't. He wanted to die. And by the way, when, when uh, my oldest half-brother went in there and he was with my dad and he said who he was, my dad admitted, yeah, okay, all right. Finally got caught. 82-year-old man laying there in his hospital bed dying in his death on his deathbed and his illegitimate son comes in and he finally says, yeah, okay. But he didn't have enough nerve to tell me or any of my other siblings. Job chapter 3. Begin reading here in verse 1. After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day, and Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which it was said, There is a man-child conceived. You know, that's, people go through that when they realize, Hey, you know, I, my birth was covered up. I don't know what all my oldest half-brother is, you know, gone through, but I've, I've heard it was, you know, had a pretty rough life. Yeah, I'm sure. Verse 4, let that day be darkness, let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it, let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year, let it not come into the number of the months. 
Lo, let that night be solitary, let no joyful voice come therein. Let them curse it, that curse the day, who are ready to raise up their morning. Let the stars of the twilight thereof be dark, for it, or let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day, because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from mine eyes. Why died I not from the womb? Why did it not, why did it not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me, or why the breasts that I should suck? For now, should I have lain still and been quiet, I should have slept, then had I been at rest. With kings and counselors of the earth, which built desolate places for themselves, or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver. Verse 16, Or as in hidden, untimely birth, I had not been as infants which never saw light. It's not a good thing to hide a birth, an untimely birth. It's terrible. And I want this sin off of my family name. What my siblings do, I, that's between them and God. But between me and the Lord and the people that I preach to publicly, I want you to know I will never cover up sin for anybody for any reason. Even one of my closest relatives, my own father, he was a sinner. I'm not going to cover it up. I'm not going to do it. And I want this off of my record. Between myself and the Lord, I was never part of the cover-up. Had I known, um, I would have definitely confronted my dad on this whole thing, but he lied to me. It's kind of interesting because, you know, you say a, a son of an illegitimate relationship is a bastard. He doesn't know who his father is. Um, well, in some ways, I'm kind of a bastard myself then. Because I thought I knew my father, but it turned out I didn't. He was a different man than I really understood. And quite frankly, it doesn't look good for him in eternity. That's a pretty bad thing. Christians do some stupid things. Christians hide sin and Christians do whatever else. And maybe, you know, maybe there's a chance. Maybe there's some little thing there where the Lord just had, you know, deathbed thing. and Maybe there's a chance. But as I preached in my one sermon, you know, leave no doubt when you die. I have doubts, legitimate ones. I had them before I even knew about this illegitimate son thing. Now that I know about this, it's even worse. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through 5, my responsibility. Let a man so account of us as, as, the, as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I take that very seriously. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. I, I could have kept this whole thing secret from all of you out there. Oh, I was raised in a strong Christian family. I could have kept it secret. But then God would judge me. I'm bringing this thing out because I don't want God's judgment on me or my son. I don't want it. Verse 5, Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, like he did with my father, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. Um, there's no use in covering stuff up, brethren. The Lord knows everything that you've done. Now, the ironic thing is we're going to go from 1 Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, to a very similar passage in 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Same number of verses, same chapter, but different books. Very interesting. 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. I'm accountable to him. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. I am a servant. 
you can hate my guts, you can do whatever you want, call me a cult leader and make fun of the fact that I wear red and black, black buffalo plaid, make fun of my beard, make fun of everything you want, make fun of me now because of my family thing and whatever else, I don't care. I want to be right in the sight of God. I want to clear my family name of what my father did, of the shame that he brought upon the, the name Denlinger. Um, I don't have a proud family name. Pride is a sin in every single case. But you know what? My family name means something to me. And I will not have it sullied by a church-sanctioned cover-up of an illegitimate birth. So, I brought that thing out because I want it cleared off of my conscience. Um, I, I've been thinking about it. I've been A lot of times I, I lay awake at night just thinking about this thing and thinking, what am I supposed to do, Lord? And um, the Lord said, bring it out. And I keep, okay, well, I'll try to get that done. The Lord's been pushing me and get it done. Get it done. There's a sin there. There's a sin that he brought to light. And um, let me just say this in closing. I don't know who you are right now watching me. But um, if you have a secret sin that you've covered up, and I'm not saying you have to dig through all your past and go over every little bad thing that you've done. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying something big. And uh, you're lying to your children and your wife, your relatives and whatever else. You better get that thing straightened out between you and God and between them. And you better confess that thing. Um, if my father had made it to death, if he had gone the whole way and the secret would have died with him, it didn't, but if he had, uh, God still would have known and he still would have answered. And my grandparents, whom I also respected very highly, um, they had to answer. They had to stand before the Lord. Saved or lost? I have no idea. I've been backstabbed so many times and seen people that I thought were saved and they turn out to be false and whatever else. I've seen it so many times. And I read my Bible and I say, Jesus Christ, the words of Jesus Christ, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Well, that's some other dispensational, just skip away from, that's, sorry. If any man consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, he is proud knowing nothing. But doting about questions and strifes of words. 1 Timothy chapter 6. I know that very few people are going to be saved. And that grieves me. I don't want to see that. But I will be honest with my viewers. Um, I'm going to be straight with people. And I don't want sin in my life. Because sin is negative. Sin hurts. Um, that's why I preach so hard against sin. Because... It's not that you become sinless, as I've said. I don't expect my father to have been a sinless man and have never made a mistake. He made plenty of mistakes, open mistakes and whatever else. But when you're hiding something as serious as that, and then preaching to your sons, don't you dare fornicate? That's serious. So, it's out now. It's done. And I pray that the that the Lord will forgive my family name and that he will use me in ministry and that he will not curse my family and curse my son as a result of the iniquity of my father. So, uh, <laughs> the kind of things I deal with, a lot of people don't even realize it. Um, <laughs> please do pray for us. Um, we're about to really tip into some horrible times, brethren. Um, in the last days, perilous times shall come. We're there. The beginning of sorrows. Um, it's about ready to get really hot out there in the world. The tensions and everything else, it's going to heat up. It already has been. Um, this is going to be the time that's going to try men's faith. And we'll see who makes it. Um, you can hate me all you want. I really don't care. Um, you can backstab me, you can do whatever you want, but please make sure that your relationship with Jesus Christ is correct. Make sure that you line up with the scriptures. Make sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die. Don't hold on to sin. That's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.